What's going on, man? Nothing much. Just chilling and working. So, folks, this is a family affair today. Got my son, Jacob, better known as The Richest. What's up? You can find him on Instagram as The Richest. And yeah. He makes beats. It's about to come up his album. Uh, it's coming fall, winter. So that's going to be dope to see. But um, he's on today because he went to Music Midtown yeah. last weekend. He wants to tell us about his experience with Music Midtown. <laughs> How was that shit? It was crazy to say the least. Um, it was a lot of stuff that just went on. And all the shows I went to go see were, were really dope. Even the show that, there was one show that I, I didn't even mean to see, but I actually really enjoyed myself with. And that was when I was watching um, Taylor Bennett, who, for those who don't know, is Chance the Rapper's brother. Um, I've heard about him, but I never really listened to his music. And he put on a pretty good show. And, he, and his music wasn't the type of music to really get lit to. It was the type of music you just chill and you can vibe to. Gotcha. So that was pretty dope. But really, I was only there at his show because Jada Smith was performing on the same stage right after him. So me and my brother Dylan, um, we pretty much stayed exactly where we were. But we were like really close. We had, like we were all the way up to the front row where the rails were at. And it was really, really dope. He put on a really dope show. And I've never seen him in person, so I never really knew what to expect. Right. But it was really, really cool. It was really, really fun. And after that, it was Billie Eilish that started 30 minutes after his show ended. I was able to see her, but I was I got some terrible I got a terrible spot because everyone was there super early. But luckily, I was able to um, enjoy myself still. She had some pretty dope songs. I don't know all her music, right. but I've heard some of it, and I was able to enjoy myself. But the main event that I was looking forward to was definitely Travis Scott. Travis Scott was amazing. Luckily, I was able to get close enough. But it was just so crazy. Like, they were opening mosh pits, and it was ridiculous. Um, I got a couple shots of him while I was close, and I got a couple videos while, of him while I was close. But eventually I bailed out because there were so many bodies. It was just a bunch of body heat. There was literally people passing out because, of, you know, it was too much heat. No, no one really had a lot of water in, in them. And... I also didn't want to die because there were so many people. <laughs> there were so many people like pushing and shoving. Um, really, if you were to fall, you would be you would be hurt. You would get hurt. Or you would be trampled. I mean, I'm being super serious. Um, I actually lost uh, Dylan, my brother, as we were getting like pushed because we were right next to each other the entire time. And then I looked right next to me, and I just saw a random person. <laughs> I didn't see my brother. Um, but he wasn't a big fan of Travis Scott like how I am. So he, he left entirely. I went towards the back and watched the rest of the show from there and still enjoyed myself. But his show was definitely the best. He brought out, he was the only artist that actually brought out other artists. All right. He brought out Offset from Migos and he brought out um, Playboy Cardi. And that was really dope. And I really, really enjoyed myself. I really had fun. And that was my first festival, mind you. And it was also really my first concert ever. Like, I, I went to five concerts, four concerts in like five hours. It was really, really so, how many stages were there? I think there were there was four different stages, and it was a multi genre festival. So it wasn't just hip hop being played. It was like a bunch of you know it was rock bands, it was pop music, it was like hip hop and and other uh, little subgenres and stuff. But yeah, there was four main stages, and there was different artists performing at each stage, and everything was really on time too. They really weren't playing around. When they said that something's going to start, the show started at that time. Now, for people who don't know, Music Midtown is in Atlanta. That's where we're at right now in Atlanta. Yeah. And it's, it's a yearly annual uh, event that happens here in Atlanta. It's pretty, it's pretty huge. It happens in Piedmont Park. And Piedmont Park for Atlanta is pretty much our Central Park. Yeah, really. Um, so it's kind of, it's not in the city, like, you know, um, in the middle of the city, like, like how Central Park is for New York. It's kind of more to the side. Yeah. But... It's our Central Park has a lake in it, and you can do some, you know, some uh, some little boating in it if you want to something in Central Park, uh, stuff like that. That's where they had these events, these large events with Music Midtown, and um, Music Midtown has been happening for a very long time. Uh, I remember years ago there was consistently like two, three years to where it was just raining, 
and it kind of rained out the, you know, the, the, the performances and they were thinking about moving it, and, but they still kept it here, which was fantastic, which was great. Um, it's, it's great to have things like this that happen. You know, tickets were like about $200 a ticket or so. Yeah, I've heard there was $200. So, to me, $200, I think that's pretty affordable, to be honest with you. Um, you know, for, for the type of event you're going to, it's four different stages. Yeah. You get to see, and it's a two-day event. Yeah, it is. So, I only went Sunday. Right. Um, we really finessed it. Uh, we really finessed the whole system, I think, because my stepfather and his sister... Uh, they went Saturday because they wanted to go see, you know, their people. Uh, I think it was Panic at the Disco, who I've never heard of, but we had like a sneak peek of his music um, when we were like in the room together. And he, he sounds pretty cool. And there's also some other people that they wanted to see. So they went Saturday. They had the two-day passes on their wrists. And the uh, two-day passes said that if they were to be tampered with, it would be voided. So like we did... Uh, in order for me and my brother to get in on Sunday, we cut the band. We tampered with it. We tampered with it like crazy. We cut the bands. We stitched, we stitched it back together. We glued it back together, literally. And um, no one was really checking for any imperfections in the bands. Like, they just let us in. As soon as uh, we scanned the no, band. scannable. Yeah, because it was cool that it has two day on the main part of the band, like where the watch is right here. Right. And there's a barcode. Cause that's the stiffest part of the band and you just there's a meter right here you do that if it's green you're good to go and that's all they really care about they never really checked which is so they really finessed cool. a little bit whether we should be discussing that or not uh, <laughs> that's not a different story but, but yeah my, my said that said that it was um two hundred dollars a ticket which i said is really not bad like you said because you're getting all those performers yeah for 200 bucks you know that's that's a, kind of almost a normal price for a one person concert yeah if you want really good seats right so, yeah yeah definitely um, to have a two-day event to see multiple artists, um, I think that's that's dope. I think that's where you know you have to support music overall, right? So, as you guys know, this platform is all about underground artists, you know, black and brown folks talking and entrepreneurship, and giving that that insight. But also supporting events like this because it brings so much to the city locally. It brings dollars into the city. Yeah. You know, um, people will come from other neighboring cities or states to come just to do this. That means that they're renting out uh, hotel rooms, they're mm-hmm. eating, you know, it's bringing more money into the city. Um, and events like this is great for artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you're an artist, this is a huge way to touch your, your audience in more of an intimate way because it's big but it's small at the same time, right? So, you know, they're not, they're not playing in front of ten or 20,000 people, but they're playing in front of thousands of people still. Yeah, still, definitely. And, um, and this is a great way for, like you said, he got to be so close to the stage. Because you, once you finish, you know, one, one event and one stage, now it's up to you to really kind of, you know, balls the wall, run, you yeah. know, get to the next stage to get a good fucking spot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, that makes it fun where it's kind of interactive that way. But since we're in the South, it's dead fucking hot. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? So you got to come. We were actually talking about this as far as wardrobe, right? So yeah, yeah. Give people, like, what should you wear to an event that's outside, super fucking hot, crowded, extra heat because you have the body heat. Like, what should you fucking really be wearing out there? Well, from what I've seen, when I was there, all, a lot of dudes were wearing sports jerseys, whether it be baseball jerseys or basketball jerseys. And I don't know if that was by design, but I also was thinking that's the smartest thing you can wear because those are the most breathable clothes you could wear in, in a day like that where you're outside and it's hot and you're surrounded by bodies and all that body heat really matters. Right. So um, next time I'm definitely going to wear a more breathable shirt because I just had a regular t-shirt and some shorts thinking I would be all right. But I feel like if I was to have like a jersey, it probably would have absorbed the sweat a little more and it would have been like way more breathable. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, that's definitely what I would do. Um, honestly, I wouldn't bring a hat um, I would probably just bring some sunglasses because I can stash those in my pocket. I, I, there was times where it got so hot I wanted to take off my hat, but I didn't know where to put my hat. So I, I just left it on my head. And that's gotcha. what was just collecting there. Right, yeah. So it depends. If someone like me, I would, I would wear a hat. Yeah. I would probably do a dry fit hat. Yeah, you're right. If you wear like a... It depends on what type of hat yeah. you're wearing. I wouldn't wear a, a fitted wool. I wore a fitted, yeah, so, so that's probably where I'm going Yeah, start. I would probably go with a dry fit hat because... It, it, it really works almost like a sweat bag. Yeah, it does. You know what I'm saying? Especially since it's made for sports. So, but these are things you have to think about, right? People don't think about that. Like, so when 
you are going to an event, how should you dress? Like it's no difference how if you're going to a a a, a, a dinner, a fancy dinner, you know how you have to gotta have a price suit and ties, probably a black tie. Or to a, to an event like this too, like you gotta be comfortable, especially if you're standing all fucking day. Yeah. You're in the fucking heat. You might dehydrate, people fucking fainting left and right, right? So what what are you doing to make sure you're as comfortable as possible? I think that's the biggest thing. So yeah. don't worry about trying to look fly. No, you, it's kind of hard to. I mean, yeah, you, you can, uh, of course, tailor your fit to the, like the jersey you're trying to wear. But um, you, if you want your kick stepped on, nah, definitely try to wear bummy <laughs> shoes. But I mean, there's a lots of dudes that made everything work, and I've noticed like everything like they had the bummiest of shoes, but the rest of their fit worked with it. And I don't know if they did that on purpose because you know they don't care about shoes as much as I do. Right. So give some backstory on the rich. The rich is a very fashion sense. So. <laughs> If you walk past him and he don't like what you what you're wearing, uh, is, I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't will, point it he, out. He will make some facial expressions. No, I wouldn't. Like, what? I would not. Trust <laughs> yeah. Him. Yes, he would. I just care about my shoes because I'm. I'm. I guess like a shoe connoisseur. I guess I have a bunch of shoes in my closet. I want to get more. Um, and I really, really care about them. I really want to make sure that they're always looking fresh. brand new. That they're always looking fresh. So, I actually brought a pair of shoes for the event, but when my stepdad and I guess my aunt by marriage came back, they were wearing sandals and their feet were dirty. So I was like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to wear my shoes anymore. Yeah. So that's when I was like, you know what? I brought some slides. Let me wear my slides, and they actually didn't get beat up as much as I thought they would. Um, yeah, socks on or no? Socks? Yeah, I did have socks on. But I guess I mean nothing was ever nothing got beat up like I thought it would, um, despite like how crazy everything was with me getting pushed around literally left to right. Yeah, I'm old school. I can't do slides. Yeah, no. I, to me, those are house slippers. So yeah. I wear them inside the house. I would never. I, maybe to go get the mail, <laughs> but I'm not gonna walk around be shopping or you know, going to any event. Usually I don't, but I mean the only reason why I did so was because I just care too much about my shoes, um, because those shoes already. Uh, I went out with, and they had a bunch of pollen on it. And when I cleaned them, because uh, they're all black, like synthetic suede, they look super ashy now. And I don't want them to get even more ashy than what they already look. I mean, I know it's like, people yeah. don't care about you it, but I mean, I, I do, you know? Because, I mean, this, I, I'm wearing them. But, I mean, definitely next time, um, bring bummy shoes, wear a jersey, or even just a dry So, was there, like, water to drink there? Did, should you bring your own shit? Like, there was water. Um, How much was it? Like $7 a bottle? No, nah, some people were selling $5 bottles. <laughs> but luckily, my brother and I brought our own uh, refillable bottles. Right, right. And there were refillable water stations, which was really dope. The water wasn't cold, but it wasn't hot. So right. it was basically like room temperature water. Gotcha. But I mean, hey, you're outside. You honestly don't care. Right. Um, it would be nice to get cold water, but you just get what you can get. So I would say maybe look into a Camelback. Actually, there was a dude, there was a lot of people with those, and I just seen them just take out the straw and just start sipping, sipping, coming right from their back, and I'm like, that's the smartest thing ever, because it's it's also sleek, too. Right, it's not that huge at all. You don't bump into them. You have that big bladder in the back, but like you said, it really fits that that backpack. It fits close to your body, actually. Yeah, because with my water bottle, luckily, I have big enough pockets to where I can just shove it in my pocket, but it was just like... Yeah, it was cumbersome, yeah. Yeah, it was just a bulge right on my thigh. So it became a little uncomfortable, especially when people were coming at you. So, so yeah, these are things people that. actually consider. You don't <laughs> think you're just going to go to a concert yeah. and chill out for five, six hours, and you're not prepared, uh, you can really get fucked up pretty bad. Because yeah. you, know, you have thousands of people, especially with kids, people are not aware of their surroundings. People are going to party, they're hyped up, they're seeing their favorite artist, yeah, their yeah. first time at a concert, maybe their 16th time at a concert, and they still, you know, go crazy for it. Which is dope, but you gotta take precautions for yourself as well, especially if you if you under any type of medication. You don't have to think about that. Oh my as well. god! You know let me saying? tell you about that. There was so much weed there. <laughs> the five minutes, not even five minutes when I walked in, I already smelled some, and it was crazy. And now, um, my aunt when she went on Saturday, she says that there was people on ecstasy and stuff yeah, like that. Or- like, and I was like. I kind of expected that. Yeah, people are tripping. People are taking shit. Yeah. No doubt. And with the weed thing, even around, around here, you know, people are smoking in the patios. It's, it's 
weed has become the most normal thing now in okay. yeah. Atlanta. And Atlanta itself has decriminalized yeah. um, a certain amount. Yeah, you can't have a certain amount in right. the city or it's, it will be trafficking, they say. Yeah, so, but pe- it's, man, it's you step on my door. People are using some other people's patios, going on patios all over the place. It's yeah. not just, you know, I live in a really nice area, so, but it's still, people are just smoking the fucking weed. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's the new beer. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, it is what it is. It doesn't really bother me too much. It doesn't seep into my house. So right, it's yeah. It's fine. Um, you know, my little ones, I have a six-year-old twins, so if you just smell it, um, they'd be acting a little funny sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let me tell you the funniest part. So, I was waiting for Jaden Smith, and um, I, I smelt it. And mind you, I was all the way up in the front next to the rails. Excuse me. And the security uh, guy that was walking between the alley and the walking between the stage and the uh, rails and he said oh, I want some of that kush <laughs> <laughs> like it was so funny because it was kind of unexpected and he was like yeah that, that smells good I want some of that and he was mind you he looked like he was like 50 something um, it was really really funny though it was it was, it was crazy though too sometimes. it's uh it, I'm glad you went I'm glad you went for the experience you know what I'm saying so the yeah. next time you know exactly how to parlay that shit yeah definitely you know what I'm saying play that shit right and um you know, have more fun. You know, because then you know exactly what the fuck to expect. Yeah. But I think, I think 200 bucks is affordable. I, I especially, like I said, you get so many artists. It's a two-day event you can go back to, so it's dope as fuck. Yeah. I, I would definitely suggest for people to take off the third day. Oh, yeah. If you're, if you're working or going to school or whatever, <laughs> like you did, right? So you took yeah, off. Yeah, I like, took off work. I couldn't take off school because I had some stuff going on, but um, I just couldn't go to work yesterday because uh, I was just tired because I came home the event ended on Sunday night at like ten, but I didn't get home till twelve, and I have to wake up at five thirty in the morning on Mondays to go to school. And I was like, I can do that, but I can't do that and then work for another five hours right. without any type of nap. So I was like, you know what? Let me call off work because I, I I rather miss work than school definitely. Yeah. Because I can't I can't miss school, but. Definitely took off work. Uh, I'm going to go today. I feel fine today, so I'm, I'm going to make those hours up, hopefully. Yeah, that's dope. That's what you need to do. Like, you need to yeah. definitely have fun, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Prioritize, you know, like you did, and figure shit out. But it's, I think going to events like that is huge. Like you were saying, it helps out the city. When you get to fucking enjoy yourself. Um, if people do it right, respect shit, then it comes to the city, you're allowed to come back over and over again. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the, I think that's the biggest thing, too. I, and smoking weed. It just to have a bunch of calm motherfuckers who smoke. <laughs> Honestly, you yeah. Know what I'm saying? So, some people get a little high anxiety, but they ain't trying to kill nobody. Um, but there was a lot of traffic, so I was like thinking about that too. Yeah. The traffic was ridiculous. So, you get dropped off there, you best bet to take, take a fucking Uber or Lyft there. Not even. Fucking, we we actually took the MARTA. We took the MARTA? To the nearest train station near here, and then my stepdad drove us from the MARTA station to here because um, I forgot that there was actually a, a game. An Atlanta there's football a, there's game. A, there's a soccer game. No, there was a football game. On that Saturday, there was a soccer game. Yeah. And then Sunday was actually football. It was football. a Sunday night football yep. game, yeah. And all that traffic with people from the festival and then people from the game. Yep. It was... It's at the same stadium. Yeah. The Saturday night was the uh, uh, Atlanta United soccer team. Yeah. That was playing Saturday night while the event was still going on. Yeah. And then Sunday, you know, the Falcons game that plays at Mercedes-Benz Stadium as well. And they all... And Piedmont Park is not too far from there, so no, it's, not. It's, it's all in that general area, so it was just jammed up. So, again, it, depending on which city you're in, definitely be, real, be realistic. It doesn't make sense for you to drive. If you just pay extra cash and they take an Uber or Lyft or some shit, and maybe if you have public transportation, take that as well. And maybe it's a combination of both. You know what I'm saying? Because um, you have to drive in and pay to probably. I think the driving in and parking your car would be extraordinarily expensive. Yeah. Um, if anything, my. Stepdad, he parked at his dad's job because his dad works in um, in Atlanta. So he parked there where it was free, and then they just walked to the entrance of the festival, which was the absolute smartest thing you can do because, like you said, parking is would be expensive for all that much time. But um, but actually, let me tell you real quick about um, and the Revoke Summit was here too at the same time. They too. did, yeah. So we also had the Revoke Summit, M- Music Midtown, soccer game, football game. This whole weekend was fucking... It was packed. Packed. Like, 
There was something to do. Yeah. You couldn't say there was nothing but to do. But there's always something that's going on every weekend. Yeah, yeah. Some shit always popping up. Some conference. Like, this has to be the conference central of America. Because, like, we stay having conferences every fucking weekend. Like, yeah. but any type of con conference it is, it's, it's there. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was crazy packed this weekend. It really was ridiculous. And people coming from, I guess you've heard of the Vogue Summit, everybody coming out of, from out of town, in town. Um, on top of the people who live here in Atlanta coming to that. It was it was thick. It was real thick this 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 fucking weekend. It's pretty kind of a kind of was like the last hurrah hurrah for summer. Yeah, honestly, yeah it was because now that that was definitely like the best conclusion to summer you can have. Right. Um, Even though our fall is still ninety five degrees. Yeah our fall is still the kind leaves of... falling in every place but it's ninety five yeah, degrees. Yeah, ninety five degrees so there's leaves it's fucking everywhere. Hot. Yeah. Um but it usually gets colder like around like Halloween. Yeah not too much colder though because I was still sweating last year. It was like 75. Was like yeah, but it's better than 95. Well, it's better than 95, but I wasn't getting... Uh, I it's, was staying with some fucking walking around. It's cooler. You know, it's not the nighttime is a lot cooler, so yeah. you're able to sleep a lot better. The humidity isn't that... that yeah, not that crazy. You're not that crazy like right now. It's ridiculous. Trying to walk and just feel like, oh, damp and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. But I, I, I love Atlanta. There's so much to fucking do here. Yeah. There's so much fucking fun. Um... And like we were talking about earlier, really looking at the state itself. Oh, yeah, definitely. And seeing what we can do, a little kind of mini trip and vlog the fuck out of that shit. Yeah, that would be, that'd be really dope. I think that would be dope. And we just stay in some random fucking hotels here and there, have fun with it, and just go to different spots. Yeah. And film the fuck out of it. I think that would be super dope. Um, so we're working that out. We're going to see if it makes sense this fall slash winter to do a vlog of that nature to where maybe we go to, the, um, to, to Helen. Yeah. You know, the Appalachian Mountains should be dope. Um, that would probably be dope in the spring because you can see all the different colors. Um, but we have to figure out what season's the best, but we still go to this shit anyway. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, find some find some shit in the state, whether it's you know even further south. I knew it further south is even hotter. Yeah. So um, since we went towards Florida, um, but yeah, I think definitely like, find some cool shit. Maybe we'll stop in Savannah. Or... Yeah, I've never been to Savannah. Yeah, I've never been. I never stopped anywhere in South Georgia. I've always just drove past it. But you want to, Florida. yeah, because uh, South Georgia is um, a whole totally different state. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, yeah. I've I've always just, I've the farthest I was was to also want to go. Um, uh, oh, I want to go west definitely. I want to go to California, and I want to go just visit. I also want to visit Texas too. Texas is a dope place. Where I was I, I lived there for a few months, and I was in Houston. Shout out to the Energy Corridor, KD, Texas. I was around there. Um, and it was dope. It's flat as fuck. You, know, like you can see miles and miles. And there's, there's stars everywhere because you know, it's the Lone Star State, which I love. Uh, and Houston's probably like maybe four or five times the size of Atlanta. So the scope, the scale of it is insane how big it is. Um, but uh, it was it was dope. Like, you know, I, that's one of the few cities I got to say, like the culture is really different, you know, outside of the whole strip mall type shit that, mm-hmm. that each state has, right? Yeah. Because now each state, each city is kind of looking the same. Yeah. Back in the day, you go to different states and cities because there was a different culture thriving there. Um, now there's so many carbon copies of cities and stuff that, you know, you go to one Walmart, it's the same as another, and that's it. There's nothing unique. But I got to say, Texas is still very unique in its culture, especially with the Tex-Mex food. Um you see white black people speaking Spanish, which is yeah. dope. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you see a, a, a combination of things, I think, um, culturally, that's as dope out of Texas. Uh, I want to go to San Antonio, the River Walk. Yeah, I want to San Antonio. Um, so we had, we had to plan a trip. We definitely had to plan a trip, like doing a road trip somewhere. So I think 2020 is going to probably be the goal. We'll take a road trip maybe next summer. And uh, It's going to be super hot. <laughs> that'd be dope. I want to probably get an SUV, though. Yeah. Just rent that SUV, fuck it. Put that many miles in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If we're driving to Texas, yeah, knowing how wide Texas is, we thought, we thought what Virginia was crazy when we were going yeah. to New York. That's I gonna hate, be ridiculous. Yeah. I never drive to New York again. No, I can't. I don't think I can drive to Texas anywhere though. It wouldn't be bad to fly. I mean, because honestly, I'm like, think about. I think if we stop, if we stop a bunch of times, that eat, yeah, and chill. I think we, we used to stop. Going to New York is always just a straight shot. Yeah. And that's absolutely. like an 18 hour fucking ride from Atlanta to New York. And we just do a straight shot with no stopping, except for fuel. 
and it is tired and exhausting. I think yeah. if we were to really take our time and make it to like a week long trip, and maybe we stop in Alabama, Mississippi, we're gonna have to go through Saint, um, um, Louisiana. Yeah. Maybe we stop by New Orleans and then head into Houston right there. Um, it's a straight kind of a straight shot. So we can take I twenty west, which turns into I ten, which leads us straight into Los Angeles after that. Um, wow. So yeah, so it's just a straight shot. So if we if we take it. If we just take our time, stop places, take a proper you know, get proper sleep, wake up, drive some more. That may be cool because we're stopping and doing shit. Yeah, but, to it's a straight run. But then I was also thinking, if we're gonna be stopping and doing all that stuff, I feel like all that money may be an equivalent to ticket, a uh, plane tickets. Because if we're but, stopping but, and yeah, yes, spending but, all that food, money on food, yes, money on but, gas. But if you take a plane, a plane ride just straight to Houston, you're missing everything in between. Yeah, so if there's yeah. any sightseeing we do in Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, yeah. we're missing all the sightseeing and shit like that. We can expose ourselves to the fun of that of that state, right? If we just take the plane ride, yes, it'll probably be equivalent in pricing, yeah. but we won't have that story to tell within four states. You're right. You know what I'm saying? And it'd, it'd be just cool to take a fucking road trip. Let's say, fuck it, let's just go west. You know, fuck time. Like, we just take two weeks out. You know, because you're going to need a break you come back from your vacation. Yeah, because, I mean, just jumping right back into things sucks, you know? It L- does. Luckily, um, when I came back from my cruise, I had, uh, what, a couple of days before I had to go to school instead of yeah. having to go right back into school. Which helps out. Yeah, it did help out. Yeah, so, so. we might look at that and definitely get that going, too, and, and see, like, you know, that would be great, great for us and the fam just to ex- explore and have fun with. Yeah. Um, it would be super dope. Just have fun with that shit. Because I think that's what that's what people, I think, are feeling right now to do. They're working so fucking hard. And I get it. You know, the time job can be tough. But the old days of just, you know, going on vacation, exploring shit, and just traveling, and having a blast, you know, that's what people are really doing. As much, as much as you may see it on IG. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those people are fucking posing some, some bullshit. But like real life people, you know, you guys got to really... You know, hunker down. Even if you say I save up for that one vacation a year and make it the bombest thing you fucking do in your life, you only got one fucking life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't take advantage of it, you're going to live your life unexplored. You know, you're not going to discover shit about yourself, let alone the place you fucking live at. So, you know, living in New York, how I did when I was a kid, like, you know, I was lucky enough I had my, my godmother, my aunt, that took me out of New York. Yeah. So I went to Virginia, I went to D.C., all these places, went camping and shit, on some backwards shit, you know, just being out of Brooklyn, and that, that helped me want to leave New York and explore this shit, you know what I'm saying, and came to Atlanta here, I was like, yeah, this is this is the spot, let's make some shit pop off, and that's where we're at now. Yeah. So, man, we have to do that, dude. So we have a yeah. lot to do. Yeah, we do. We've got lots of fucking plan. we got plans, Georgia fucking scavenger hunt kind of <laughs> shit, and then we already had to plan out a proper, like, trip to go yeah. west. I think Texas probably would be a cool spot to go to. Definitely. We have to find some, some, some crazy rural spot in Texas. And hopefully the Texas Central Mexican won't fucking find us. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking about. So, I don't know. That'd be dope. That's how you know Texas is flat as fuck. I can't, I can't imagine seeing something that's just so flat. Cause I've right. jacked, I've, you can see for fucking miles in it. It's flat. <laughs> Cause both in New York and both in both here is just this hills. Yeah. The most flattest part I, I've ever seen in any landmark would be just a street. Yeah. But you said everything is flat. There's it's, nothing it's, to you can see. Because that's the Great Plains, right? That's entering the Great Plains. Uh, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. And all that is flat, too. Correct. That goes on for oh, miles. Yeah, because that goes all the way up north into like the. Uh, what, North Minnesota? Dakota? North Dakota, yeah. I can't imagine. But you gotta plan a trip to, to the Dakotas as well. Yeah, I mean, some people. Actually, Utah. I heard it was really nice. Utah is cool. Uh, Nebraska, I heard, is, is an up and coming city. So we gotta we gotta check like the really the, the middle of the country, give us some love because yeah, everybody doesn't really talk about the coastal region. It's always New York, LA, New York, LA, New York, yeah, LA, yeah. and then Miami. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think it's, I think we should fucking do that to where we check out all these fucking you know Midwest you know cities mm-hmm. and really say yo this is dope. This is what you know come here show. I wouldn't mind having a place. In Montana, Wyoming, one's super cheap. It is, but it snows a lot. Yeah, 
Why would I mind having a spot there just to say, you know what? Let's go up there for the summer and fucking just shut down. And just fucking relax and do nothing but. Why not? I mean, I would love to also go to Colorado too for Christmas. Yeah, you know, I have my boy out there too. Yeah. So, I got people down there. Yeah. So. I'm starting to. I have, I have a friend in uh, Delaware. So, we could hook up some time when we go to New York or. Uh, maybe I end up moving somewhere else. Guys, I can't wait for that. Yeah, so. <laughs> I, can't I know wait. you can't wait for I that. I can't wait for you to go fuck out my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been playing around with the Because I want you to explore. Yeah. I want you to really go out there, see how it is to, to fend for yourself. Yeah. You know, you're not going to have a whole crib. You're probably going to have just a room somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Backpacking and some shit. Really exploring what life is and you get to really figure out what you want. And... I think that's the most fun ever, to be honest with you. I would love for you to take a year off from school and do that. You know what I'm saying? Even a semester off, at least. I would understand? like to. I mean, but I don't know if I can because I have a mom and stuff. But I mean, if I'm already two years in, I might as well just finish these next two years and then just, I guess, do that as a celebration you for can? the completion of yeah. my college. Because you're not going to get a regular job. We already know that. No, I don't want to write that. No, no, no. 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 So we already know that. So yeah, he's going to school. He's going to uh, 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 Georgia State University, yeah. and uh, he's going out for English. In, in literary arts. Literary arts, and he wants to be an author. Yeah, and, and if I'm going to be an author... That traveling could be your yeah, content. Yeah, it could be my about. work, and it, it could be my, um, my inspiration. Absolutely. So, if I do that, travel, I can get so much more in-depth into details with landmarks and other places, because... I could only really pull out things from what I know right now, and that's really only New York and Atlanta. Right. I would love to go out west. I would love to just leave um, the East Coast entirely, at least for like a, a week, so I can experience all that over there. Because it's, it's really an entirely different world, despite it being in the same country. Unless, unless you do your summer that way. I maybe can. Uh, uh, unless you do this, so you take a leave of absence from work. Yeah. Like you stack your bread this whole fucking this fall and winter into a stack, skimp on shit, like yeah. you know, live on pennies, right? Which I kind of do now. They call me a Jew because I, yeah. I act cheap. When I really have a lot of money, I always <laughs> act cheap. I mean, I mean, that's how the rich stay rich, you know? Exactly. So. And people are going to probably say some fucked up shit when you said about doing Jew shit. It's, it's old school shit, so get over it. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Cancel me if you can. Um, so, that this is where I think you should fucking go after. Your summer to be where it's a traveling fucking summer. So instead of spending a weekend, like maybe it's a month. Yeah. Maybe it's two, three weeks there. And then you go to, maybe you do go to Colorado or some shit. Like. And honestly, I, I probably won't even want to go by myself. Because all my other friends aren't in school like how I am. I think I only have one other friend that's in school like, uh, like I am. And all of them are working full time. So if I can really get them to do a trip, which we've been playing around with. The idea of for a trip for a while and if we actually execute it we could probably go some places and actually really have some fun because there's a lot of money uh to play with too yeah so that's definitely something i would love to do um we were playing around with the idea of going to new york um i don't know if that'll happen exactly new york's pricey it's very pricey so i don't know i mean we just got to talk more as as like a group I feel like we gotta meet up together because this is all just being talked to right. in the group chat. We're not really like looking face to face or really discussing anything crazy. But definitely, it would be really, really dope if I could do it with all my friends. That way, I can have like a really good time. You know. I think so, bro. I think you should definitely go out there. Do you think even with your fucking brother? Yeah, but you know, I'm kind of, kind of. I, I love him to death, but I'm kind of sick of seeing him right now. We've we were on the cruise together for like what two weeks, yeah. and we were rooming together. Um, we were together all day Sunday, really all this day for, Saturday. This, 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 this next year that you're talking yeah, about, yeah, next, next summer. Year. So, but I'm not ready to see him until next year anyway. So <laughs> he'll be here next week too. So uh, he, but, um, that sucks. But this, I think, is something you should think really plan out. Yeah, yeah. Find out what cities you want to go to, and then you can tell your job, hey, you know what, I'm not quitting. Yeah. But I do have to take a leave of absence. Uh, this is, I had to go out west, you know, for the summer. Um, and uh, if you stack your bread right and really manage your money right and 
I, I think it definitely makes some shit happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we do, you buy your tickets in advance, your plane fare in advance, you know, as many exits when you booked, you know, make sure you just get there. Yeah, which is the easiest way you can right. do it. And then that way, you know, you can travel across, you know, across uh, the country a little bit, and then you really have something to write. Yeah. You know, before you even graduate, you can fucking have a published book before then. I think that's something you should really consider. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a goal of mine. Uh, I just still need to, I'm still trying to figure out my schedule. Uh, my work and school schedule and once i really see how much time i have in between because i have to study and stuff actually i studied today but after i study and stuff i can see how much time i have to write because once i do that um i i would love to be able to publish one of my stories before i graduate absolutely and that would be really really cool that'll be that'll be really inspiring to me too because i'm like wow i did this before my degree now just imagine what i can do after my degree now that would look great on a resume too. Say I start writing for yeah a, a company, and they allow me to go anywhere around the world. Or have you just stay freelance, right? Yeah. And you just writing, you know, maybe some op eds for whatever yeah. magazines or even papers or whatever, and people want to commission you to write some shit. Why do you still write your own books for whatever you fucking do? Like that's when you have financial control of yourself. Yeah. You have you know your own economic awareness for yourself. You build your own economic power based off of that. And then you also have control of your time. Yeah. You can say, yeah, these trips are cool and I'm doing this, but it's also research for me. It's also work. I'm also taking stuff in. Yeah. You know, I'm also had to take notes, you know, at the end of my day and what did I experience, how did I feel. You know, there's a lot to go into write a book. And it's that seems like a really fun job though. That's the thing. Like if you're traveling and all you gotta do is take notes and and, and write down your experience, I mean, who wouldn't want that? Yeah, exactly. So imagine when you're making beats, you're making an album for the story, and then you also have a book come out. Yeah. I mean, how, many, how, how, many, how, how many 20 year olds could be able to say that? I don't know. Or put that in their resume? No one really. I mean, it's probably be pretty rare. Um, and that's what I want you to go for. I want you to go for the shit that makes you happy. Yeah. If it makes you some income, that's fantastic. That yeah. makes you have something that you can really grow with and prosper on. I don't want you going after the money. I want no. you going after the experience. I want you going after just the, the execution of completing something and feeling fulfilled. Like, oh shit, I did complete this book. Holy shit, I didn't think I could. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or I did finish this album. I got features on it. I can't believe my fuckers featured on my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I am? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's 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 dope shit. That's what I want you to go after. So if you can make that happen while you're going to school as well, that just makes you even more of, of, of a stronger well-minded person to execute what you want for the rest of your life. I want your 20s to be a decade of exploring and discovery. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? And figuring out how to make your fucking millions. I think within five years you'll be a millionaire. And that's guaranteed. I believe that. Um, if only you stay focused and consistent. If you don't stay consistent and you're not focused on it like you should be, if, just, if, it's, just, if it's just a hobby, then you're not. Yeah. That'd be a cool thing for you to do on the side and you're not getting really paid for it. You just do it to have fun. But if you become something that you're truly passionate about and you truly are becoming really consistent with it, then it's going to be kind of definitely uh, uh, an economic draw for you uh, with the things that you want to do. But you have to be consistent and hard work at it. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but thanks for coming on, bro. No, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love you to death, man. Yeah, I love you too, Dad. So, um, this is the richest. Coming on to season two. Season two. Giant on my presents. I just presented. The riches. So watch out for his uh his album coming out and also watch out for his book. Yeah. That's coming out. No title yet, but we're gonna get things going. So Yeah, definitely. But he's writing already. Yeah. So if something's gonna come out, you need to save about three to five grand and do just indie publishing. Yeah, definitely. Talk about that some more. Yeah. All right, people. Peace. Wow.